Well, good, af good afternoon. It's great to be back in Fort Lauderdale. I want to thank uh, Shane Strum uh, for hosting us here. Also want to represent, represent uh, recognize representatives Fabricio and LaMarca. Um, also, we have Dr. Aldo Calvo, uh, Broward Health uh, Medical Director of Ambulatory Services. And we also have a patient with us who will be telling his story about receiving early treatment, uh, Mika Siegel. Uh, so I want to thank him for being here as well. We um, um, are excited uh, to be able to say we've done well over 90,000 treatments with monoclonal antibodies just at the 25 state sites uh, that we've had. Uh, we were able to do one of the original sites that we did was at C.B. Smith Park. Of course, that was the site of we were one of the first states in the country to do the drive-through testing using the National Guard. Broward was the first place that we did it in the state of Florida. And we also, when we did the vaccine uh, distribution, uh, we were the first state to send strike teams to nursing homes for vaccination. And we did the first nursing home vaccination drive down in Broward as well. Uh, so C.B. Smith has been a, a really great uh, place to get a lot of this done. Uh, and so we were happy to be able to do that uh, very early on. And the results have been, have been really positive. As you can see, we've seen really, really significant reductions in hospital admissions, in the hospital census, in visits to the emergency department for COVID-like illness. I think we've had, um, I think one of those, I want to get it right. So there's been 24 consecutive days where the census statewide for COVID positive patients has declined. And when you're on a downward trend, obviously you would expect to see uh, negatives, but, but usually it'll pop up and then go down on a downward trend. We've, we've actually had 24, and I think if you look, it's probably been something to the effect of 29 of the last 30 days, uh, but certainly to see this go down 24 days in a row, it's going down uh, significantly. And we think having uh, the availability of the early treatment uh, has made uh, a big difference. Uh, here in uh, South Florida at the Pembroke Pines uh, C.B. Smith Park, uh, we've done about 6,000 treatments just at that one site. Uh, we've done about 6,000 at the Tropical Park site um, in Miami. Uh, and we've done close to 5,000 uh, at the West Palm Beach site. And those sites are open seven days a week from 9 until 5. If you want more information about locations that are offering monoclonal antibody treatments, you can go to floridahealthcovid19.gov. If you want to register for a treatment, uh, you can go to patientportalfl.gov. So a lot of people registered on that same site for vaccines many months ago. Now you can go and register uh, for monoclonal antibodies. We also, when we set up these sites, Part of, what, part of the reason that we did it was actually Shane was on a, a Zoom call with uh, some hospital CEOs. Uh, this was probably at the end of July, beginning of August. So we started to see, we see this surge of, of patients. We see this wave. Um, and we were looking, okay, what's going on? What, what can be done? And it's most of the folks, Shane was doing it here. Some other hospitals were doing the treatment. But a lot of the patients that were coming in, were already too sick for the treatment and they didn't know about it. And it wasn't anything that was being discussed. There were a lot of physicians that didn't know to refer people to get uh, a monoclonal antibody treatment. And so we said, whoa, whoa, this is problematic because it does have a good track record. The emergency use authorization for the monoclonals came at the end of 2020. And we were talking with the, with the doctor and with Shane earlier the vaccine was, of course, the thing that everyone was talking about. I mean, Shane and T was working uh, chief of staff at the time. I mean, we immediately, I flew to D.C., I met with Warp Speed. We had all the plans to do all the stuff with vaccine distribution, did, did very well with it. Um, but this was something that was available during the time. Some hospitals, like here in Broward, embraced it. Tampa General has been involved with it. Not all did, and, and many physicians uh, was not something that they – uh, that, 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 they, that they knew a lot about. So we saw that patients were going in. We saw very few of them had done this treatment prior. So we wanted to raise awareness about it. But we also understood that as awareness is raised, you need to make sure people have access. And so that's why we decided to set up these state sites. Uh, we were able to do a high volume of patients because the Regeneron treatment had been approved recently for subcutaneous injections. Now, what they do here and in most hospitals are the IVs, which is very effective, uh, but it takes a little longer to be able to hook someone up with the IV. We're in a situation now, you do two shots to someone's belly, a shot to each arm. Uh, it takes a matter of minutes to do that. They still have to be observed, but you're able to do a lot more patients. And so we were able to do this 
ramp up these sites uh, really in no time and be able to serve a, a lot of folks throughout the state of Florida. But we also understood part of the key to this is getting it early. So particularly if you're a high risk group, uh, if you get infected, if you do it early, your chances of this succeeding are very, very high. If you wait until you're sick enough to need to be hospitalized or worse yet, be in intensive care, the chance of this turning that around really declines dramatically. However, sometimes people will get infected and then maybe it's hard to see a doctor. You used to have to get a referral uh, to be able to go with the hospital sites. Our sites, we did a standing order with the Surgeon General that basically said if you meet the criteria in the EUA, if you're elderly, if you're overweight, if you have diabetes, heart, lung, the, the normal comorbidities, you're able to come directly to our sites and do it. And I was actually speaking to the, to the head of Regeneron and he said, you know, that's a really important thing because time is important and if they can get in quicker, the chances of succeeding. So that standing order has been there and I think has served a lot of people well. We also knew when uh, we had the round table, you know, what we were seeing was, you know, these were infection waves throughout the South, also Pacific Northwest and Hawaii, you know, that were exceeding what we've seen throughout the whole pandemic. You did have fully vaccinated people testing positive. It was not a rare thing. Uh, they tended to have milder symptoms than somebody that was unvaccinated, of course, uh, but clearly we saw that. And so when you looked at some of the most vulnerable people in Florida to COVID, most of them or almost all of them have been vaccinated. And so it's helpful, but at the same time, we were seeing breakthrough infections. And so if you have somebody who's in their 80s and has comorbidities, uh, are they just supposed to hope for the best or do you wanna make sure that they have uh, access to this treatment? And so we thought it was important for both, regardless of your vaccination status, to have access. And so it's interesting, at our Broward site, 52% of the patients that have received treatment have been vaccinated. 69% uh, of those over 60 that have received treatment at the Broward site have been vaccinated. In Miami-Dade, almost 60% of everybody that's been treated at the Tropical Park site has been vaccinated and 73% of the patients treated at the state site in Tropical Park that are over the age of 60 have been vaccinated. And so I think that uh, the message is you do need to have treatment as an important component when you're dealing with COVID. Uh, we have been able to do that, and I think the, the results have been, have been very, very positive. And so uh, we're going we're gonna to keep this up. Uh, we're going to keep letting people know that this is something that is, that is available, that is important for folks, uh, and that has a proven record uh, of efficacy. And again, if you're somebody that is elderly, if you're somebody that uh, is overweight, if you have kidney problems, diabetes, heart, lung conditions, uh, this is something that could make a big difference for you in terms of averting a hospitalization uh, or even worse. And if you look at the declines we've seen, I mean, clearly, you know, we've kept thousands of people out of the hospital who were able to get the early treatment. And so we're, we're happy that, that that has been the case. Uh, we're gonna have uh, some folks come up here um, and talk. Uh, Shane Strom's gonna talk about what they've been doing at the hospital, and then we'll get a medical perspective from Dr. Calvo. Uh, and then we'll hear from um, uh, Mika Siegel, who will talk about uh, how he got the monoclonal antibodies and, and what that meant for him. Okay, Shane. All right, thank you, Governor. Good afternoon, I'm Shane Strum. 